Uh, I'm Hung-Yi Hu, and I'm a researcher at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. And today, I want to talk about leveraging open source and hobbyist technologies to connect affected communities in disasters. So in a lot of disasters, we have to deal with uh, comms infrastructures that are damaged, destroyed, saturated, and stressed. And what this means is that it leaves affected communities without a way to communicate with each other and figure out if their loved ones are OK or not. Now, we already have some great tools, like Google Person Finder, that helps deal with this problem. What we don't have is when the existing comms infrastructure is down, we don't have a great way of connecting people quickly to these tools. The existing solutions that we do have are either really expensive, like with SATCOM, or they're not very portable, uh, they take too long to deploy, or they don't last very long when they are deployed, like in the case of micro UAVs. So our idea is to leverage the fact that many people in these communities have access to mobile devices, like cell phones, tablets, and so on, and what we want to do is build a platform that can communicate with these devices in a disaster, get information from them on a voluntary basis, and share that information with the people who are seeking it. Um, so what would happen is if you have a cell phone or other device, uh, you can connect to our system either over Wi-Fi or cellular. Uh, you can share data with us. You can search our data. And we will organize that information. Uh, we'll uh, sync it across our database and eventually push it to, to a tool like Google Person Finder or other analytics. Um, so in doing this project, we really had four main goals in mind. First and foremost, the system must be usable. Uh, it must be relatively inexpensive. It needs to be robust, and it needs to be portable so that it can be quickly deployed in the case of a disaster. This is a really hard problem. Right? We have to deal with scalability issues. Uh, we have to deal with the fact that mobile ad hoc networks have been around for a while, and they're actually quite tricky to get right in practice. And also, we have to deal with regulatory concerns whenever we're dealing with RF transmissions. So to help us deal with some of these problems, we're reducing the scope of our project to only providing very basic comms services. So we're not going to provide any voice traffic. We're not going to provide any general internet access. Right? Uh, we're just going to try doing very, very simple things. Uh, we're also going to leverage existing technologies whenever possible. So we already have some great projects out there, like OpenBTS, uh, like APERS. And we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can just use what we already have and apply it in an effective way. Uh, we also plan to build this together with the community. So the idea is we're going to open source this project so that anyone in the world can download our code. Uh, they can, if they have access to these components, build their own prototypes, experiment with it, improve it, and share that back with the community. So the way our system is going to work, uh, we're going to have an ad hoc network of these nodes, some of which may be airborne, they might be static, or they might be attached to a mobile platform. Uh, you can share information. Uh, as I mentioned, you can search the network. And responders can also push information out to end users. On the front end, there's no installation required for end users. So you can just jump onto our network in an emergency with your phone or your tablet. You can start talking to us over either SMS or over a locally hosted uh, web page. So internally, our nodes uh, are made up of relatively inexpensive hobbyist hardware. So the idea here was to keep it very modular and very flexible so that anybody can build their own. They can plug in other components if they want to use it. They can add functionality wherever they see fit. Uh, over our backend links, our nodes are going to talk over at least several kilometers, and they're going to have reasonable bandwidth so that we can uh, sync all of our data across our network in a reasonable time frame. So one of the options we're looking at to do this is with amateur packet radio. And this is an awesome technology. Uh, it's often used to talk to people all around the world, to satellites in orbit, and even to the International Space Station. Right? So this is a really mature technology, and there's a pre-existing infrastructure we can already tap into in case of an emergency. Uh, another solution that we're looking at is modified amateur Wi-Fi mesh. This is really awesome because you can buy a uh, commercial router just off the shelf and put the firmware on there, and it will just work. And it's also great because it provides really good bandwidth um, in comparison to packet radio, so we can push a lot more data. Once you get the data to one of our nodes, uh, it's going to be synced across our network using a really simple flooding protocol. Uh, we have measures in place to deal with loops and also to support retransmissions as nodes join or are dropped off the network. Uh, with the data that we can collect, we're also building analysis and visualization tools. So for example, we can use Google Maps API to uh, build a picture of what's going on in the local area, including where people are and how they're doing. Um, finally, we're going to do some field testing in a couple weeks. Um, so we have a prototype that we're going to deploy on MIT campus and also uh, either at Fort Devens or at Hanscom Air Force Base. Um, so we have a bigger area to work with. 
And that's the current state of our project. Um, I would just want to mention that internally we're calling it CATAN, which is, stands for Communications Assistance Technology over Ad Hoc Networks. And if you, have any, if you have any feedback, any criticism, or any other ideas, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and thank you for listening.